get to work. Number eight, evolution made you a drama queen. Imagine you're walking home at night and a plastic bag rustles in the wind. Instantly, your brain is like, yep, that's it. That's the end. We're about to be mauled by a werewolf. This delightful mental overreaction has been hardwired into your system by evolution. Back in caveman days, thinking, hmm, probably just the wind might get you surprise murdered by a predator. But thinking, oh God, a tiger and sprinting away, that guy survived. His anxious genes got passed on. You are essentially the descendant of jumpy, overly dramatic survivors. Congrats. So when your brain defaults to worst case scenario, it's not trying to ruin your day. It's trying to keep you alive, just like 40,000 years too late. In the modern world, that rustle in the bushes is now an unread text, an email from your boss, or someone saying, we need to talk. Your amygdala doesn't know the difference. It just smashes the panic button like it's trying to win a game show. Basically, you're a paranoid squirrel in human form, and evolution is to blame. Number seven, your brain sucks at probability. Let's say you're on a plane and there's turbulence. Your brain immediately cues up a full IMAX screening of Final Destination, Flight Edition, complete with flaming debris and panicked flight attendants. Statistically, you're safer up there than you are crossing a parking lot, but your brain doesn't care. It's not wired for math, it's wired for vibes. And unfortunately, those vibes are doom. See? Your amygdala, the brain's panic button operator, doesn't evaluate odds. It reacts to emotional weight. A fiery plane crash feels scarier than slipping in the shower, even though the latter is way more likely to take you out. Your brain's like a terrible insurance agent. It charges sky-high anxiety premiums for low-risk events and offers zero coverage for the stuff that actually kills most people. So next time you spiral about sharks while swimming in a pool, remember, your brain isn't rational. It's just a very loud drama llama wearing a lab coat. Number six, catastrophizing is just anxiety. Cosplaying as logic. You're about to send an email. Seems innocent, right? But wait, what if you accidentally attach the wrong file? What if it autocorrects regards to retards? What if your boss reads it, forwards it to HR, and you end up living in a van, selling handmade soap, and crying into your tax returns? Welcome to catastrophizing, where your brain plays a never-ending game of what if but worse. It feels logical in the moment, because anxiety is sneaky like that. It dresses up in a three-piece suit, calls itself preparation, and whispers, just planning ahead, my dude. But this isn't productive planning. It's fear in a fake mustache. Studies show that anxious brains tend to overestimate threats and underestimate coping abilities. It's like having a GPS that only gives directions to panic town and skips all exits to reality. Your thoughts aren't always facts. Sometimes they're, they're just intrusive little gremlins throwing worst case scenarios at the wall to see what sticks. Spoiler, it's usually none of them. Number five, the negativity bias never logs off. You could have 99 good things happen in a day, but if one person looks at you funny, guess what your brain's gonna replay on loop at 2 a.m.? That one weird look, in HD. With commentary, this delightful quirk is called the negativity bias, and it basically means your brain treats bad stuff like a VIP guest and shoves the good stuff into the broom closet. Again, evolution strikes. Early humans who remembered threats, like which berries made you poop your skeleton out, survived. Meanwhile, the chill ones who focused on sunsets and bonding moments probably wandered into a bear. Today, that same survival feature turns your brain into a jerk. Get 10 compliments and one criticism, guess which one you obsess over. That's right, the one that said your voice sounds like a tired raccoon. This bias warps your perception, makes risks feel bigger, and fuels the worst case scenario machine like high octane nightmare gas. Your brain isn't broken, it's just pessimistically efficient. Thanks, ancestors. Number four. Hypervigilance is just paranoia. With a gym membership, ever walk into a room and immediately scan for exits like you're Jason Bourne, even though you're just at Chili's? That's hypervigilance. Your brain on high alert for threats that probably don't exist. It's what happens when your nervous system decides, we're not relaxing ever again. Maybe it's from past trauma, chronic anxiety, or just the internet feeding you a 24-7 buffet of worst case headlines. Either way, your body's acting like a lion could jump out of the appetizer menu at any moment. This state isn't just mental, your muscles tense, your breathing shifts, your senses sharpen like you're preparing to arm wrestle death itself. And all the while, your brain is hoarding imaginary red flags like it's prepping for an emotional doomsday. But here's the cruel part, hypervigilance doesn't make you safer, it just makes your life feel like a suspense thriller, starring you but without a plot, villain, or resolution. Just endless fake jump scares and digestive problems. Number three, control freak mode activated. Let's say you're planning a trip. You've checked the weather, double booked hotel backups, created a color-coded itinerary, and pre-mourned the inevitable flight delay. Congratulations, you're not organized. You're panicking efficiently. When you imagine worst case scenarios, it often triggers a desperate need to control everything because deep down your brain thinks, if I can predict disaster, I can prevent it. 
which is adorable and also delusional. Life doesn't care about your spreadsheets. This obsessive forecasting is rooted in something called intolerance of uncertainty, a fancy psych term for I hate surprises unless they involve cake. People who struggle with uncertainty tend to overplan, overanalyze, and basically turn their entire personality into a risk management system. But here's the kicker. Trying to control every outcome actually fuels anxiety. You're playing chess against a hurricane, and spoiler, the hurricane does not follow the rules. So yeah, worst case thinking might feel like control, but in reality it's just anxiety in a business suit pretending to be your life coach. Number two, your brain is addicted to closure, even if it's terrible. You ever invent a tragic ending to a situation just to stop thinking about it? Like, well, they haven't texted back in four hours, so I guess they hate me, moved to Antarctica, and legally blocked my existence. Why do we do this? Because your brain loathes open loops. Uncertainty makes it itch. It would rather jump to a terrible conclusion than sit in the suspense of I don't know. This is called need for cognitive closure, and it's basically your mind yelling, I don't care if it's wrong, I just want answers. Even if those answers are depressing, melodramatic, or make absolutely zero sense. In other words, your brain would rather you catastrophize than feel unsure. Which is why we imagine car crashes when someone's late, or job loss, when our boss says, can we talk? Your thoughts default to horror movie endings because at least then the story's over. Spoiler alert, it usually isn't but your brain likes its fanfiction bleak and early. Number one, anxiety is a terrible psychic, but you keep hiring it. Let's be honest, your brain thinks it's some kind of emotional Nostradamus. It throws you into a panic spiral over things that haven't happened, might never happen, and honestly don't even make sense if you say them out loud. And still, you listen. Because anxiety doesn't whisper, it screams. This'll go wrong. They'll definitely hate you. You're probably dying. It's like your inner voice read a doomsday blog and just ran with it. Here's the truth, anxiety wants to help. It just has the emotional maturity of a raccoon in a thunderstorm. It tries to protect you by simulating every possible disaster, as if constant worry is the same as preparation. But spoiler, your anxiety is wrong most of the time. Like, hilariously wrong. Studies show that over 90% of the things people worry about never happen. That's like hiring a weatherman who predicts fire tornadoes every day, and still bringing an umbrella. So next time your brain serves you a worst case scenario buffet, maybe just Send it back to the kitchen, politely, with a middle finger. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.